This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid. What does AI mean for the future power grid workforce? In this episode, I'm joined by Ronan McEwen from NIE Networks to talk about automation, engineering talent and the changing recruitment landscape. Hi, Ronan. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us again. We had a great discussion um, before about the shape of the workforce at NIE today and some of the cultural initiatives, leadership initiatives you've been driving um, to improve workforce uh, engagement and retention. Um, Looking to the future and, you know, in terms of what's going on in the world broadly, the the changes in in the world at large, changes in the sector, the grid sector, and also the introduction of new technologies like AI, quantum, et cetera. Um, What do you think the shape of the grid workforce is going to be in the next five to 10 years? How is NIE preparing for that? Hey, thanks, Mandana, for having us along again. Um, Yeah, yeah, the future of the industry is really interesting. You know, I grew at a real kind of pivotal moment um, for the industry to kind of start to rethink and reimagine what the future energy grid looks like. And then you can work back from that and try and understand what the skills needed are to support that. Um, so there's no doubt, given the kind of age profile of a lot of the infrastructure that's out there, that there's a necessity to go around and rebuild a lot of that infrastructure and to rebuild it with heavy enhanced capacity. Okay. Um, the challenge we probably face, given that there's an increased kind of demand connecting, such as electric vehicles and heat pumps and so on, mm-hmm. is that you could get lured into rebuilding double the amount of infrastructure that that's maybe uh, needed. And the only way to kind of avoid maybe doing that is to really start leveraging the infrastructure through digital technologies and, and building the capability around that. And also looking at how do we democratize energy consumption in a way that allows uh, consumers to be more empowered and work with the grid, maybe more so more actively rather than being passive. So to do a lot of that kind of work, it probably as well as having the kind of core engineering skills that are needed to build out the infrastructure you're, we, we have, as an industry, we start need to start to develop new capability in terms of data and digital and mm-hmm. um, ability in terms of understanding the economics better and markets better mm-hmm. and kind of maybe just broadening out the diversity of the workforce a fair bit so that, you know, when we're looking at some of the challenges, we aren't just looking at them through traditional engineering lenses that we're bringing in kind of diverse views within the organization and uh, considering is there other ways that we can achieve the same outcomes without necessarily having to rebuild double the amount of uh, copper and copper cables and wires and so on. Okay. Are you working with um, the education sector in terms of the content of the um, degrees uh, for engineers going forward, given the need for a more multidisciplinary skill set and a more diverse skill set? We're, we're working with the, the different university institutions here in Northern Ireland and the further uh, education colleges and it's probably a case more so of us understanding the nature of the different programs that they already have in flight so mm-hmm. in the, you know traditionally in the past we would have recruited a lot of people through electrical and electronic engineering pathways what we're doing now is broadening out the scope of who comes into the organization so we have people coming in with uh, degrees in energy uh, we've got degrees in software engineering um, data literacy and so on. So we're, we're broadening out the level of intake probably is probably the biggest impact that we're having. Um, in terms of specific needs for the organization, what we're seeing now is that there's a quite a breadth of skills needed and not necessarily all of them need to come through the traditional kind of university pathways. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing is looking at other entry level kind of roles where we're creating, uh, we've created a thing called the Planning Academy which is really people who are going to develop entry level roles into network planning. Yeah. And we've worked with some of the further education colleges to develop a curriculum so right. that they can get a base level of training. And that's working in tandem with doing placements in NI networks here. So it's working quite well yeah. in terms of taking the, taking the pressure off the internal staff in terms of doing some of the you know, basic electrical training and um, allowing them to be supported um, but also exposing some of the new people in the organization to this is the, this is the real, reality of the work that we do. And they're getting a nice blend of both there in terms of uh, education and practical experience at the same time. Right. Okay. That's great. 
Um, in terms of some of the new roles that have come into the grid um, in recent years, roles like data science and cybersecurity that were not, um, that haven't been in the grid uh, in the long term, um, those tend to be roles that are fairly transient, um, is, is what I've picked up from the sector as a whole. Do you think those skill sets can easily be integrated into the core engineering skill set? Uh, because the engineers are really uh, the foundations of, of the grid workforce, aren't they? Do you think it's realistic to transfer those skills to engineers and allow them to uh, operate uh, on a higher level in that way? Yeah, I think at this stage, you know, there's a lot of complexity around that, the nature of that work so that we are engaging with kind of specialists who provide that type of capability. Yeah. I do think that with the younger generation coming into the organization, they are more digital natives. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, you know, working with them is probably paramount in terms of, you know, unleashing the capability that they have anyway. So mm -hmm. some of the statistics that have come across recently are like 70% of ChatGPT usage is by people under 35. Mm -hmm. And about 40 or 50 percent of that content is all around learning. So they are already upskilling themselves in general um, in terms of how they can leverage like AI technology and, and, and other digital technologies. So the key, key for industry kind of leaders, from my perspective, would be, well, how do you have the right kind of support around those people coming into the organization so that they understand that we have a way of working at the minute, but they're also allowed to bring their kind of creativity into this workplace. And if they can see other ways that they can use their digital experience to get the same outcomes that they should be encouraged to do so. Now, a big controversial topic at the moment is the role of AI um, for the workforce in general across all sectors. Um, within the grid, what do you think, how do you think AI can be leveraged to boost the workforce? What's the likely impact on the current roles for the future, do you think? How is it likely to transform the workforce? Yeah, so AI is definitely a topical um, thing at the moment. And I've been playing around with a number of different kind of AI products just to try and understand it better myself. Uh, as far as I can see, like there's still a, a significant need for the, the kind of human to be in the loop with uh, AI. So mm -hmm. I don't personally believe that it's going to be a complete eradication of uh, roles within the energy industry. However, definitely has the potential to be leveraged in a way that can help us uh, move faster. So I, I see AI in its current guise anyway as a real productivity booster for everyone and a real leveler. So, um, you know, the more we kind of play around with these things and understand what they're capable of, I think we'll start to see where the opportunities lie. But, uh, you know, trying to think forward a number of years, um, you know, the idea of AI agents doing things on the, on the grid is possible. But it's the cyber risk that comes with that that'll be a challenge. And how do we make sure that there's like um, some sort of a skilled, educated human in the loop that's monitoring what it's doing? Mm -hmm. um, so when, when you look at the amount of devices connecting, the amount of controllability that's going to be needed to really fully utilize the grid, um, there's no doubt that it, you know AI is going to be probably an imperative for the energy industry to see how do we leverage it to exploit right. the capability that's already there in the, in the network. Um, I think the, the other thing from my perspective is there's a lot of mundane tasks that can potentially be eradicated and that creates value for any organization. So I would look at it as a real, like there's, there's an endless amount of opportunities in our organization at the minute. So if we can use AI to kind of take, you know, alleviate some of the pressure that is created through some of the mundane routine, routine tasks, right. it actually frees up our people to be doing more value add activities and really play into the things that humans are really good at. Um, yeah. you know, and, I think that's that's the real potential in it for me. Yeah, the more creative, innovative um, functions of of the roles. Absolutely, yeah, I I totally agree because you can just see that in the last few years, particularly since COVID, the the grid workforce has been under tremendous pressure, and to be able to leverage AI to alleviate some of the burden of the administrative tasks would be a massive product uh, productivity booster. Well, that's great. The future seems very bright, Ronan, for the power grid. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your thoughts um, on the use of technology and also new initiatives to drive uh, workforce engagement. Um, we look forward to having your contribution at SGT26 in Paris. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Ronan. 
AI won't completely replace engineers, but it is changing the way they work. Thanks to Ronan McEwen for the insights. Join us again next week as we unpack another big topic shaping the future of the power grid. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Smart Grid Forums, and follow us on LinkedIn. Until then, thanks for watching and listening. This is Powering the Future, a podcast series brought to you by Smart Grid Forums. One planet, one power grid.